Hi everyone, so welcome to the broadcast today. Very much excited for uh, having you. If you join the broadcast, you know what to do. It's a special Q&A session and today I am sharing with you also um, what you need to do in order for you to pass your examination and I'm going to be focusing on why students actually uh, fail their exams. So stay with me and share the video. Let's reach as much people as possible. So you comment below with any questions you have. And also share the video with others so we can uh, reach as much people as possible in this stream. So you comment below what questions you do you have. You comment below with all your questions. I'm going to be answering all your questions for you. So And share the video as well, okay, so we can reach as much people as possible. Today I want to uh, answer one of the key questions that students also ask a lot of time, and that is, why students fail the ICA exams. Yesterday, I spent uh, some in-depth time to discuss the issue in relation to uh, how you must structure yourself, how you must manage yourself, and the various things that you need to do in order to increase your chances of passing the examination in the exam hall. So I explained to you the things that you are supposed to do and the things that you are not supposed to do, the things that you are supposed to avoid and the things that you have to consider as a student going into the ICA examination. So the big question is, why do students fail the exams? Why does it happen? Why is it that every semester the number of students who fail the exams sort of keep rising or why does it happen that way? Why? So that is a question I want to address today and, and give you some strategies and some techniques on what you can do in order to uh, save yourself from uh, that uh, issue and also strategically position yourself so you can prepare well for the examination and ultimately, ultimately pass the exams in relation to that. So. Comment below any questions you have. Maybe you are studying and you don't understand something or you want me to throw some more light on a treatment of something in financial reporting, corporate reporting, taxation, uh, management accounting, public sector, whatever it is you are studying. If you have any questions in relation to what you are studying, just comment below in the comment box and let me know about it and I'm going to be answering all your questions for you. And also share the video. Let's reach as much students as possible so that we can together impact the world and also help uh, to uh, assist a lot of students across the uh, country and across the continent and ultimately across the globe in relation to that. So comment below. What questions do you have for me? What do you want me to share my thoughts on? What do you want me to uh, discuss with you? Just comment below and I'm going to be doing uh, that in relation to that. So why do students fail the examination? Why? Because yesterday I told you that the exams is passed in the exam hall. So why is it that many students keep failing the exams? Why? Is it that the exams is difficult? But remember what we discussed yesterday? We concluded that no, the exams is not difficult. So students are not failing the exams because the exams is difficult. Students are not failing the exam because they are not treated uh, well by the examiner. That is not the reason. Students fail the exam because of a lot of uh, issues in relation to that. So today, I want to address that issue and, like I said, assist you in relation to uh, what you have to do as a student and even how you can answer the questions in the exam hall. So remember yesterday, I made mention of the fact that it is very, very important you allocate time very well. And we said for every one mark question, you are supposed to spend 1.8 minutes in the exam hall. For every one minute, uh, uh, one mark question, you are supposed to spend 1.8 minutes. So if it is a five mark question, you know you are supposed to spend nine minutes on that. If it is a 10 mark question, you know you are supposed to spend 18 minutes on that. So that has to guide you in relation to how you got to structure. Then I also mentioned that there are a couple of things you got to avoid. And number one, I said you have to avoid unnecessary definitions, unnecessary explanation, and also learn to go straight to the point. And when you are writing, you don't talk about unnecessary issues. You just go straight to the point and write your answer to the question directly in relation to that. So we discussed this yesterday. And today we want to address the question, why do students fail 
the examination and i know this is a very critical subject a very critical topic so comment below any questions you have for me and also share the video as well with your friends your colleagues your loved ones let's have a lot of people coming on the stream let's see we can have a lot of people coming on the stream joining the stream and also and asking their questions you can also uh, click on uh, the watch party button and be able to uh, hold a watch party hold a watch party of the live stream so that we will be able to uh, again reach as much students as possible now why do students fail the exams in order for us to answer that question we need to go and 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 figure it out now the the best person to tell us why students fail the exams and the consequences or the causes of their failure is to speak with the chief examiner. Now, when I say speak with the chief examiner, it doesn't literally mean that you go to the chief examiner or you go to ICA and you say, I want to see the chief examiner uh, and I want to ask him why I fail the exams or I want to ask him why people fail the exams. But we can read the chief examiner's thoughts from the examiner's reports that he issues at the end of every semester or when results are uh, released for each semester and i'm going to be looking at the chief examiner's reports for just the november 2019 examination that is the current examination immediate past examination under the new ICA syllabus in relation to that which took effect from November 2019 and will run from now till uh, 2024 depending on the objective and whether there will be modifications along the line. So I'm going to be going through the examiner's reports and we will discuss some of the reasons why students fail the, exam the exams and you will be able to now understand that then you can learn to avoid those things in the exam hall and I'm going to certainly be adding my voice in relation to the strategies that you have to implement in order for you to pass the examination in relation to that. So comment below what questions do you have, whatever question you have, put it in the comment box and also share the video as well. Number one, I'm going to the financial reporting uh, paper for the November 2019. Like you can see, I know you cannot see this very well, but this is our detailed analysis of the exams and this is how we'll be able we will uh, prepare our examination analysis document or we prepare our examination analysis document which is given to uh, the students in order to find out the key areas they have to focus on in order to increase their chances of ultimately passing the exams now if we look at the financial reporting November 2019 we need to first look at the performance of students I gave you a glimpse of this yesterday when I was discussing the issues now, from the chief examiner's report, this is what we see. The examiner said that that is financial reporting. About 80% of candidates scored less than 40% of the total marks. About 80% of candidates scored less than 40% of the total marks. So 80% of the candidates who sat for financial reporting examination scored less than 40 marks. Now, so in crunching that into numbers, what does that mean? Now, that means that if 1,000 students sat for the financial reporting examination, which is, it's more than 1,000 though, but if 1,000 students sat for the exams, then it means that 800 of them scored less than 40%. So 800 of the students who sat, like 1,000 students, 800 of them scored less than 40%. Then the question we ask ourselves is, how about the rest of the 20%? Did they all pass? The answer is no, they did not all pass. So you realize that the pass rate is very, very small when it comes to financial reporting. Now, if this is the number of students who failed financial reporting, what are the causes? What, what could be some of the causes why students will fail financial reporting? The examiner, again, gave some reasons. That he thinks, uh, he, he, that he thinks in his in his in his belief and his understanding of the student's performance, uh, conclude that the failure could be attributed to. The first thing is inadequate preparation by candidates. Many students fail the ICA examination because of inadequate preparation for the exams. If you are going to sit for the ICA examination, you have to be prepared for the exams. It's critical. We cannot overemphasize this. We cannot 
say this just anyhow like that and let it go. We must say it the way it has to be said. So if you fail the exams or if students are failing the exams because of inadequate preparation, ask yourself right now, how many times do you sit behind your books? How many times do you study? How many questions do you practice every week in relation to what you are studying, in relation to what you are doing? How many questions are you solving? This is crucial. This is critical. So ask yourself, one of the reasons why students fail the examination is typically inadequate preparation. Because the average student preparing for the ICA exams sits down, not do anything. Even for the, the, the average student who attend lectures, they go, go lectures, they attend lectures, and they open their books when they get to the lecture hall. And they write whatever it is that the lecture teaches, and that is all. The course of the week, they don't open their books again. If you ask them, say, oh, sure, <laughs> you know, we are busy, you know, the work, you know, family, you know this, you know that. The following week, they will come to class. And you ask, what did we do last week? Then they start flipping their books to see the thing that they did last week. Who are you cheating, my friend? Who are you cheating? And they pile all the questions that all everything they've learned, they, they are studying, they pile it down. Two weeks to the exams, one week to the exams, then they start studying. That will not work. That is what the inadequate preparation uh, is about. All right? That is what the inadequate preparation is about. So you don't sit down two weeks to the exams and start being serious. You've got to be serious from day one till the day you enter the exam hall. It is commitment. Don't give yourself excuses. And I'm my job. And I'm my wife. And I'm my children. And I'm my this. And I'm my that. And I'm... Your exams, you are giving excuses like that? So, what if you become the president? Or you become the finance minister? Or you become your, the CEO of your company? Will you get time to upgrade yourself? You got to stop giving yourself these excuses, my friend. So one of the reasons why students fail the ICA examination is inadequate preparation. Shortcut. They attend lectures correctly. And for those of you who don't attend lectures, your own is, is even not good. Your own is even not good. Because if you're not attending lectures... You, you, many, the average student who does not attend lectures does not even have an order in what he or she is studying. Yeah, I stand to be corrected, but that is why I use the word the average student. Because they don't have order. They study with emotions. They study with their feelings. They don't have anybody that gives them any assignments. Neither is anybody asking them, you have to learn, you have to do this. No. And they are just mining it on their own. But if you want to pass your exams, then you have to be adequately prepared. Then I hear somebody who's saying, Shira, I prepare, ah, I don't even know how to prepare again. I prepare, ah, I went to the exam or I still failed. Listen to me, you did not prepare. You were joking. You did not prepare, you were joking. So adequate preparation is critical for you to pass the exams. The only way you can pass the ICA examination is adequate preparation. That's all. So that's the first key reason why students fail the exams. So what am I telling you now? I tell, I tell students that the CA May 2020 exam has been postponed. That's a good news. It buys you time to study. So for those of you who have closed your book and you have put it down and you are waiting... Yeah, when CA announces a new date, you it they will give substantial time. So they will announce, even if they will announce a, a new date, it will be like one and a half months or something like that before the actual exams will, will take place. And so they are waiting for CA to announce a new date for the exams, then they will now start being serious. And that is where you start. Every revision session, one week to the exams, every institution that is organizing revision session, you will see people attending. So why do people attend all these revision sessions but still fail the exams? Why? Because the revision session does not work for you. 
you can't sit down and not learn uh, one week to the exams and or and one day go and meet a lecturer and the lecturer teaches you that one day you go to the exam or you go and pass it's not magic we are not conjuring things the revision session works for the students who has been studying all this while so that that place we give you the summary you already know the stuff already so we give you the key nuggets boom you go to the exam hall and then you pass so for those of you who are sitting down not doing anything waiting one week to exams two weeks to the exam then you will take leave and you will start being serious you are wasting your time it's not working for you there are a lot of you you can attest to the fact that this thing is not working for you but you are still doing it you are still it's not working but you are still doing it why are you still doing it why because there is a popular saying that says that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again in the same way but expecting different results that insanity by that definition it means a lot of people are insane you've done the thing once it didn't work you did it you are doing you did it again it didn't work you are doing it again why I told you yesterday and I keep on telling this to my students and uh, uh, both on campus and online one of the things that breaks my heart is every semester when I read the chief examiner's report it's, it's not a comfortable thing but I got to read it because I need to read it to find out the challenges of students how questions should have been presented so I can better assist the students very well and let them know that is why I can share what I'm sharing with you today because if I don't read the chief examiner's report, I don't know what is happening to students so that I can address the issue well. And when I read the chief examiner's report, 80% of students score less than 40%, my heart break. Because I remember big air institutions organized revision session and students went. Students attended revision sessions. They paid money, attended revision sessions. Ninyina Nkosiaga. And you are still doing it because you, you, you I don't know you think oh by the grace of God you write again and you no 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 put in the work put in the efforts have a personal timetable I've shared this with you three days today that's on Wednesday I shared that with you have a personal timetable and commit yourself no matter how busy you have if you have 16 wives uh, seven, 79 children uh, you, 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 have, you are running nine, 92 companies. Whatever it is that you are doing, still schedule time to upgrade your skill. You are not busy than Warren Buffett. You are not busy than Jeff Bezos. You are not busy than uh, 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 the president of the United States or the president of Ghana or the ministers. Many of these people are still learning, are still improving themselves. You ask yourself, how do they get the time to do it? How? Because they don't have excuses. The road to the top is not for lazy people. So if you want to pass your exams, then I, can, I have to tell you this straight and straight. You've got to prepare well for the exams. Simple. Simple. You've got to prepare well for the exams. And for those of you who do the last minute thing, please stop. Stop the last minute show. Because it's not helping you. You are telling revision class, hey, Kwame is doing revision class here, then you jump, you go. Akosia is doing revision class here, you jump, you go. So you pay 70 Ghana here, you go and pay 100 Ghana here, you go and pay this. You go to the exam hall and you still fail. Because if the revision sessions are working, then students will be passing the exams. But it's not working. Now, is it the process or the people? It's the people. It's the people. Because revision sessions work best for the students. It's one of the key reasons why now our revision sessions is not open to the public. That students will come. No. Our students, we deal with them during our revision session. That's it. Because I know them, we've been with them throughout the period, and we know their problem, we know their challenges, and during the revision session, we can do all of that very well, polish them, and they go to the exam hall. Because... You can't use one week thinking you are, you, you are not a shark like that. 
It doesn't happen. Your brain doesn't process information like that. You cannot learn financial reporting like that. Oh, one week I'll take leave and I'll cover the standards. And I'll cover, you know, uh, console the air. I have to master console. Uh, yeah. Then, then I, I will master the ratios. Then I will master, master the standards. At least if I'm able to answer these three questions, I will pass the exams. Master, the console you think you have mastered, you have not mastered it. So you go to the exam or you see the console question, you can't solve it. You can't do as much as you are supposed to do. You see the standard question, it looks familiar, familiar, familiar. Like, like uh, my daughter says, looks familiar, familiar, familiar. It looks family, family, family. Like you know that thing, it's like you've heard it before, you know it's some, but you can't answer it because you are inadequate, you are ill prepared for the exams. That's the first core reason. That's the first core reason. Second one. Lack of understanding in financial reporting standards. Lack of understanding in financial reporting standards. Remember, I've told you this over and over again. The bedrock for financial reporting, the bedrock for corporate reporting is the financial reporting standards. The accounting standards and the double entry. Many students don't have the understanding. Why? Because they don't spend adequate time studying the accounting standards that is why i keep on telling you go to my youtube channel i have lecture videos on almost all the standards you will need to pass your exams almost all the accounting standards i have lecture videos on them name it name it and i have lecture videos on that IS 12, income tax, IS 16, IS 20, IS 23, 36, 38, 37, IFRS 5, IFRS 16, IFRS 9. Name it. I have all of them on my channel. After you watch this, and you are writing financial reporting or corporate reporting, go to my channel, subscribe to the channel, download those videos, and watch them. Understand accounting standards. That is how you can pass the exams. That is how you can prepare for the exams. And the accounting standards understanding is not about one week project. It's not something you take leave and come and do shabo shabo something and go away. No. No. You've got to be damn serious about it. So the reason why students fail, number one, is their inadequate preparation for the exams. Let me sip some water. Inadequate preparation for the exams. And then number two, lack of understanding in financial reporting standards. So do you understand the accounting standards? Now, these two points actually cut across all of the subjects. The inadequate preparation thing cut across financial reporting, corporate reporting, uh, strategic case study, taxation, uh, public sector accounting and finance, financial management. It cuts across. It cuts across. All of the scope it cuts across. So the question is, are you going to be prepared for the exams? If next week was the exams, will you have been prepared? Will you have been ready for the exams? So that is something that is critical. That is something that is critical. And then you must understand the basics of each of the questions or each of the subjects you are writing. If you are writing financial reporting, Definitely the basics are the financial reporting standards. Double entry, corporate reporting, the same thing. The basics, you cannot let it go. If you're writing PSA, what are the basics? If you're writing management accounting, what are the basics? You must understand these. Very, very important. So that is it about the issue in relation to uh, um, financial reporting in, in that case. Let me come to management accounting and also share with you uh, some things there in management accounting. Still for the November 2019 examination diet. Now, when it comes to management accounting, you know, it's theory and calculation. And for the November 2019, the examiner concluded that the structure of the exams for the November 2019 was uh, the written or comment questions uh, covered 40% whilst the calculation questions were 60%. So when it comes to management accounting, like 40%, 60%, it means sometimes the examiner can do 30 
writing, 70% calculation. Sometimes you can do 35, 65. But what it means is that there are a lot of theories in man accounting and you've got to be reading uh, the theories very, very well. So in as much as you know how to do the various calculations uh, about budgeting, about variance analysis, about investment appraisal, about short-term decisions, limiting factor analysis, all of those things, you have to know the calculations, throughput accounting. The theory aspects are, are, are also critical and you must know them. So 40% theory, 60% calculation. Like I said, that doesn't mean every semester is going to be 40% or 60%. The examiner can vary it. It could be 30% theory, 70% calculation, 35% or 65%, depending on the examiner's uh, objective for that examination diet. Because remember, every examination sitting, there is an objective of the examiner. That's one thing you have to understand. That is why I tell students, don't look at what happened last semester and bench on that and say and just say okay this is what will happen this semester no every semester the examiner has an objective and you have to be careful to be able to know the objective of the examiner for each examination setting and that is what we do with our examination analysis document here where you are able to uh, do that and then get to that now what did the examiner say about students performance management accounting for november 2019 Students' performance was unsatisfactory. Unsatisfactory. <laughs> that is the comment from the examiner. Students' performance was unsatisfactory. Should I say enye? Now here there was no percentages like corporate financial reporting. 80% of the students scoring less than 40%. In management accounting, the examiner said students' performance was unsatisfactory. But what are some of the problems of students that the examiner uh, uh, identified? In the May 2019 examination, what are some of the things that the examiner identified? Number one, lack of clarity and poor presentation. Remember, the strategies I'm sharing with you are not just subject specific. They cut across. So number one, lack of clarity and poor presentation. There are some of you, the way you answer your questions is not clear and your presentation is poor. Your handwriting is clumsy, not clear. We can't read it. That is one of the reasons why students fail the ICA examination. So you have to work on your presentation. I, I tell my students all the time, especially in the financial reporting, corporate reporting, uh, uh, and then I think uh, um, management accounting class, and I tell them about professional presentation all the time. So when I'm solving a question, if, if I'm solving a question, I'm not solving it in the, in the best structure that I think it has to be solved. I clean it. Then I said, professional presentation, we are supposed to present it this way. So clarity and presentation is critical in the example. You don't just begin and write because you are answering the questions. No. How orderly is it? What you have written, is it clear to be read by the average person? I have some students that uh, they present solution to me and I'm like, okay, so read it and let me see. And their own work that they have written, they find it difficult to read. Because they are writing, like they are writing fast and so everything is just, so there is no clarity, the presentation is poorly done and you hardly read it. If it happens that way, you may be writing the, the, the correct thing, but it is not uh, 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 visible. We are finding it difficult to read it. So you'll be marked wrong. Or we put question mark, boom, inside. Because we don't understand what you're writing. Maybe you're writing uh, whatever, another language that I don't even want to talk about any language for anything. Maybe you're writing some language we don't even understand. But maybe you are answering the question. So please work on clarity and your presentation. Management accounting, this is very critical. Financial reporting, this is very, very critical. And the writing or reading subjects, pu public sector, taxation, strategic case study, those of you writing audit and assurance and advanced audit and assurance, presentation and clarity is very, very important. Now, the reason why this was a key problem the examiner recognized was that the theory questions were covered 40% of the whole examination. 
So the examiner was able to get that presentation and clarity well, and that also goes back to the issue in relation to, um, how do we call it, the issue in relation to the calculation questions. So that's the first thing. Number two, lack of understanding and lack of understanding of concepts and poor interpretation of results. Lack of understanding of concepts. So this is like the basic concept that I spoke to you about earlier. The basic concept I spoke to you about earlier. So many people don't even understand the question. The question that is set before them, they don't even understand the question. And, and uh, be before, because they don't even understand the question, because they lack the basics, the foundations of the subject, they just start writing a couple of things. And so they poorly interpret the question and so they digress in their solution. This goes back to studying. Because if you spend time studying well, if you spend time solving a lot of questions, you won't get to the exam more and be digressing. Because when you read a question, you know exactly what this is. I remember one time we were solving a consolidated, sorry, a single entity question in financial reporting. And I told the students that um, every question, it was, it was just a question someone brought all of a sudden to the class uh, for me to look at. Uh, and it's not something I do because I wouldn't want to solve questions that I'm not, I don't have prior notice on to look at what the, what the treatment is going to be. It's not in the class that I have to think. I have to have a prior knowledge of everything in relation to that. So she brought a question up from somewhere. And so as I stood there, I read through the footnotes in the shortest possible time. I just can't read. Then I said, okay, in this footnote there are, I think six accounting standards and I listed them down that there are six accounting standards in the footnotes. So we read, uh, I told them note one is the standard, note two is the standard, note three is the standard, note four is the standard, note five is the standard, that kind of thing. The one person was like, ah, sir, how do you know that? Because there is nothing in the footnote that clearly states that this is the standard day. Then I said, because of the way the footnote is structured, this is the standard that the footnote is talking about. And as we read the footnote one after the other, and I explain the footnote and we solve the question, they now understood and appreciated the issue in relation to the accounting standards. So it's very critical. You don't read a question and be thinking. When you read a question, you read the requirement, you should know that this is what the examiner is asking about. Very, very critical. Then another thing that the examiner mentioned is the reason why students fail the exams is poor expression of English because of the reading subject. Poor expression of English. I remember sometimes someone jo uh, jokingly said, um, accountants don't speak good English or accountants don't know English. I don't know who came up with that. I don't know though, but poor expression of English language. Spelling mistakes, comprehension, writing, expression, everything. So the examiner is saying that, hey, that's one of the reasons. So in case your English is not good, you've got to work on your grammar as well. That is why I tell students, when you are studying, you have to be taking notes. That is why you need to practice a lot of questions. Because when you practice a lot of questions, you write out. When you finish the English, you wrote you compare it with the solution and find out whether your English marks up. The, the language you wrote actually marks up with your solution. And this is where a lecturer comes in to assist you. This is where you need to be studying under the mentorship of somebody who you'll be able to write something to for them to correct you in the language in relation to that. One of the things I do is, uh, when it comes to financial reporting, interpretation of ratios I don't do it with the students. I don't do it with them. So I just give them the introduction, how the interpretation is supposed to be done. I give them the guiding principle. Then I say, go and write your own thing. Then they write it. Then they bring it. Then I'll take everybody's own one after the other. We were just doing this in management accounting. You know, management accounting, we have evaluation of performance of organizations, and there is ratio there. And we're just doing it. And we couldn't laugh. Like, we were all laughing on the Zoom call, right? And with, all, with our students. Uh, and, and we were laughing. Then I said, 
one person was like, said, Shira, this one is like he just wanted to laugh at us. And I said, no, I'm not laughing at you. We are, we are all discussing this. We are all looking at everybody's work. And I've opened, I'm sharing my screen with them. So I've opened everybody's assignment. Then we are reading profitability ratios. We read what A. Amar wrote. We read what uh, Kofi wrote. We read what everybody, we read what everybody wrote. Then I said, you see, the kind of English you are writing. This is even assignment to see the things you were writing. So then I correct them. Okay, this place, this is not a language that should have been there. Change it and make it this. This statement you made here is totally wrong because of A, B, and C. So you cancel it and replace it with this. That is how you polish. That is how. But if you don't have anybody who will look at your work like that, you will go to the exam or thinking you know how to interpret financial statements. Thinking you know how to write the pistol framework. Thinking you know how to explain the types of peop, uh, uh, public partnership agreement. Thinking you know how to explain the sources of finance. Oh, but you'll be writing some expressions that don't even exist. So that is something you got to be working on very carefully. Whilst you are preparing for the exams, you've got to work on your expression. English language is critical. You've got to be learning every day. This is why you've got to be reading a lot. You've got to be reading a lot. Because if you are limited in words, you, you are limited in your expression. You see, you should have a lot of synonyms. Okay? A lot of synonyms. A lot of antonyms. Nearest in meaning, opposite in meaning, so that you don't have to be using even the same word or the same expression throughout. You, you, sometimes you are reading somebody's analysis and you realize that the same statement, the same word is being used throughout. No. As an accountant, you can't do that. English language is very, very important. So one of the reasons why students fail the exams is poor expression of the English language. So I want you to work on it. Work on your grammar. Well, and th that is why I said the way you work on your English is in two ways. You read or you listen and you write. You got to practice. You got to practice. Because practicing it is the key thing in relation to that. Practicing it is the key thing. That, so that is the solution. So I don't write any reading thing st like strategic case study. I give them we, uh, uh, work, and we are supposed to use the framework to do something, or a module to do something. I don't write it on the board for you to copy, then you go and chew baba. What if you go to the exam hall and the structure of the question is different? Would you pour that baba there? No. So I give them, that, that is why you need to study uh, uh, under the mentorship. That is why I don't, my students, I don't see us as just teacher and student. That after the class, everybody goes home and that is all. That is not what I do. That is not what I do. What I do with them is that I see them as my mentees. And I see them as my, I see them as my mentees and I am a mentor to them. So I hold their hands and I make sure that I, I go with them one-on-one. -on -one. There are times I hold one-on-one -on -one session with a student on Skype. Or sometimes it's a WhatsApp phone call. Or just a traditional call. We, we, we discuss it. I said, this is your problem. You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this. And it works for them. It works for them. That is the key thing. So please, for those of you writing, especially the, 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 the English uh, uh, or the writing subjects, man accounting, financial reporting, work on your English expression. Very, very important. Very, very, because you see, this is one thing I tell my students all the time. The English you speak at work. The English you speak with your friends, your colleagues, the English you speak even at home, is not the same English that you write in the exam hall. But the average student, the same English that he or she speaks at work, at home, uh, with their colleagues, that is the English they bring to the exam hall. So you see some people speaking pidgin on the paper. Doing the shortcuts, like when you're writing notes, the shortcuts that you students do, they are doing the shortcuts in the exam hall. What's the meaning of that? So you've got to work on your English expression. I see some comments. Let me look at them real quick. 
Uh, Achibald Nikwe said, doing a great job. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. And God bless you too. Joseph Odro said, I'm really enjoying your explanation. Thanks, senior. It's a pleasure, Joseph. Then Nanayao Kwenu said, good work. Thank you very much, Nanayao. If you have any questions, put them in the comment box. I'll be very much excited to answer any questions that you are having. I'm sharing with you uh, why students fail the exams so that you will avoid some of these things and, uh, and, and work well. So far, I've spoken about the fact that students are not are, are failing the exams because number one there is an odd inadequate preparation many students don't prepare well for the exams that's the first thing then i made mention of the fact that students also lack understanding in the financial reporting standards and this is specifically to financial reporting and then corporate reporting and i said that this actually cuts across every subject has its basics that you must understand if you don't understand the basics then you cannot understand and pass the subject then I said, one, one reason also students fail the exams is lack of clarity and poor presentation. Your handwriting, you got to write well. You don't, you, you don't make it clumsy. You, you have to write and it should be visible, eligible, should be able to be read. I don't have to put on my glasses before I read what you have written. I don't, I don't have to be trying to imagine and assume what you have written. I mean, I don't have time for that. <laughs> The examiner doesn't have time for that. So anytime he has to struggle, that's, that, that, that may be nonsense. And then, boom, you just can't. You, but maybe you were writing the right thing. But because of clarity, because of the presentation, it's not making sense. It's not making sense. Two, I, the next thing I said is that lack of understanding of concept and poor interpretation. I said the reason why we face this is because of the preparation that we have. And then number three, Poor, or the next point, poor expression of the English language. Very, very important. Very, very important. So, work on your grammar. Work on your presentation. I will like you. Now, every subject has some theories there. If you take financial reporting, ethics is there. Uh, conceptual framework and regulatory framework is there. Interpretation of financial statements, you have to be writing English. And even the standards, there are sometimes you don't have to do any calculation. You have to write English. So your expression is critical. The expression of the English language is very, very critical. So write. Write it out. And get somebody to polish it for you. Get somebody to assist you in, in understanding what you are doing. Don't do it on your own. That is why I tell people, don't study on your own. Don't say, oh, Charlie, I'm doing self-study. Oh. No, 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 no. That is not the right way to go. That is not the right way to go. I can guarantee you. That is not the right way to go. You can't do self-study. You need a mentor. You need a teacher. You need somebody you can go to. Oh, say, this is what I've done. Oh, can you look at it and, and correct me? Because sometimes, you see, you think you know English. But you don't know anything. <laughs> that's, all, that's sometimes one of the things. You think you understand English. And so you write English. Then you present the thing. Then they are like, hmm. So this is your English, and Charlie, it's, it's serious. So you got to work on that. Uh, I see a comment from Majori Mensa. Majori. Now, in case I don't mention your name well, don't, don't kill me, okay? I've qualified by the grace of God. Whatever you are saying is true. I hope students will take everything you are saying serious and work on it. Bless you for the good work. Awesome. Awesome, Majori. Mensa, that is that is a great statement there. Congratulations on your qualification, and I believe that you are uh, going to. Uh, you, you don't have to stop there. You got to go ahead and take everything to the next level and enjoy yourself very well. So whatever you are saying is true. Thank you. You are qualified, and so you have an experience of that. And I hope students will take everything you are saying serious and work on it. So God bless you as well, Majori, and thank you very much for such uh, a message uh, so that the students will understand uh, in relation to that. So these are a couple of things that you need to understand, work on uh, for you to pass your exams. Like I said yesterday, don't blame ICE. Don't blame anybody. 
if you fail the exams it's not ICA that has failed you it's because of some of these mistakes and you would take some of these things for granted presentation clarity English language expression you would take it for granted sometimes people say oh Charlie yes accountant what is the presentation put it down the English is important the English is very very important all right I see a question from George Wilfred Tobler Jr. I said sir please explain the concept of standard costing for me Wow George standard costing is quite broad and uh, okay but let me explain the basic concept of standard costing for you I have a, uh, a content some content on that on my YouTube channel all right So from here you can uh, check that out as well but I'm going to give you uh, the basic concept of standard costing now when it comes to standard costing and variance analysis this is one of the fundamental uh, issues if you are doing management accounting or F2 or F5 in ACCA in relation to that now standard costing comes to being because entities will want to uh, analyze or assess their performance and make various uh, decisions they want to assess their performance on an operational level as well as on on the economic level in relation to that so for them to do that they must set some standards and at the end of the day use that standard they've set to prepare the budget and at the end of the day the standards will now be compared with the actual in the context of the actual activity in order to get the variance in relation to that now, so when it comes to standard uh, costing, we said that there are uh, four types of standards, but the definition is very key. We said that the standard costing, it's, it's four things, and that tells you the process of standard costing. Number one, we said that standard costing uh, refers to the establishment of cost, uh, recording of actual results, and comparing the actual results with the established costs, and then identifying any differences and undertaking investigation and performing variance analysis so that's the four stages that involves in setting of the standards so you establish the standard uh, in relation to that so for the year coming we when it comes to material we want to buy material at 3.5 dollars per kilogram that's the standard we've set um, after that we now collect the actual information how much did we actually pay maybe we, we paid 3.5 or we, we budgeted or we start we set a standard of uh, 3.5 dollars per kilogram but on actual we paid uh, five dollars per kilogram so we record the actual then we now compare the actual to the standard taking into consideration the actual activity that has been undertaken so more or less like you are doing a flex budget if you are familiar with a flex budget flex budget preparation concept is the same thing that is used in standard costing and variance analysis because you are flexing the standard cost bringing it into uh, the actual terms so that you can compare it now with the actual results then you get your variance in relation to that so once you collect the actual information then you now compare the two and definitely there will be a favorable variance or an adverse variance and then after you get a variance you investigate why did it happen what are the causes of it? Whether it's favorable or adverse variance, you have to investigate. Even if it is favorable, it means that maybe the standard you set was poor, or maybe the, uh, the suppliers or the materials you bought were not of the highest quality. So you need to investigate, even if you have what? A favorable standard in relation to that. So that is basically the fundamental issue when it comes to the standard cost. There's definitely there are four types of standards you got to understand. Uh, uh, attainable standards, unattainable uh, standards, uh, basic standards, and current standards. I'm not going to go through that in, in relation to that. Then from there, we can calculate the standards for various uh, elements of cost. So material, labor, sales, and overheads material labor sales and overhead and that each of these things also there are various uh, variances in relation to that so george like i said this is the basic thing this is a whole topic that i need to uh teach but uh it's a, i have a video on that already on my youtube channel you check the management accounting channel uh, uh playlist and you'll get some content on that as well in relation to that possibly i may be covering all that as well on the 
on our Facebook page here later on where we will solve questions and I'll go through the principles well for each of the elements of cost for you to understand it. But like I said, when you're doing standard costing, it is more or less like you're doing a flex budget and now comparing the flex budget with the actual results. So if you are familiar and you understand the preparation of the flex budget, it is that same concept we use in the preparation or the undertaking of standard costing and variance analysis. So George, that is your answer. Uh, Chino uh, said, um, thank you, sir. I really like your advice and guidelines because they help me a lot. It's a pleasure, Chino. It's a pleasure. Thank you also that you find them to be something that helps you and assist you in order, uh, something that helps you and assist you to prepare well for your examination. It's a privilege that I'm able to assist you in relation to that. Okay. So that is what I'm going to be uh, sharing with you today. Why students fail their examination? Why students fail? You see, like I told you, you don't have to fail the exams. And in case you failed once, you don't have to fail twice. That is why you have to work hard. Spend time to study. Don't wait for last minute show. Don't wait one week and take leave and come and sit behind the book and say you are learning. No, you are, you are, you are giving yourself depression and emotional torture. Because you finish writing the exams and your mind is empty. Like your mind is, I don't know if you've, you've experienced this before. You, you finish writing this, you learn under such a harsh condition, such a harsh pressure. Then you finish writing the exam. When you come out of the exam, or you realize that your mind is literally empty. Like that. Your mind is way like egg is blowing through your mind. Because of the pressure that it goes through. But it doesn't have to be like that. But I know you say, but in Shira, I am busy. I mean, I have children. I mean, I have this. Mommy, Papa, you're, you, you are not busy. It's your excuses. That is why you have to analyze. Look at your life. The things that you do don't add, that don't add value to you. Cut them off and focus. Because when you finish this, you become successful. You make a lot of money. And you live life on your own terms. You can do the things that you want to do without thinking about money. Okay, when you become successful, you have your you make the money or you are making the money and you are living life on your own terms and nobody can tell you anything, anyhow and go away scot free. You control the affairs in your life. You can do everything that you want to do, but for now, you got to sacrifice and take it there in relation to that. So that is what I will share with you today on why students fail uh, the ICA examination. Like I say all the time. Do not bother students. Do not say that, uh, do not bother and say, oh, it's the ICA that is doing that in relation to that. I see another question from Nanayao Kuenu. Let me read that real quick. Please, I was preparing for the upcoming diet and all of a sudden the COVID-19 pandemic brought my preparation stalemate and now I want to bounce back. However, all my previous knowledge is gone and I, and I am actually not, and I actually don't know what to do. Please kindly advise me on what to do to gain my learning appetite back. All right. That's, that's, that's an honest uh, uh, um, statement from Nanaya. I, I love that. I love that. If you, if you know your problem, it's very critical. That is the first point of becoming successful. If you know your problem and you take responsibility and you seek advice, boom, you become successful. So Nanaya, thumbs up to you for that statement uh, that you make. So I'm going to provide you with some strategies on what you have to do in relation to that. So Nanaya, the coronavirus pandemic has not done anything. Yes, it may have halted schools, closed down schools, but it hasn't done anything. So what will make you get your appetite for learning back? Go back to the reason why you started this course in the first place. That's the secret code. Why did you start the ICA in the first place? Why? You started because you wanted to better your life. You started because you know when you finish, you get a better job, you, get, you make a better money, 
and you, 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 you live life on your own terms and become successful. You started this course because you know your future depends on it. You started this course because you know you're going to become successful after you do it. That is the goal. So now, in order to get your appetite back for studies, let that goal come back to you. And even make that goal much bigger now. Sometimes I just, I want to, I, I know when I do the ICA and I finish, I'll become successful or my salary will increase. That is just a vague goal. So look at your goal and now set a solid goal for yourself. Nana. Maybe tell yourself that the reason why I'm doing this ICA because I know when I finish, I can make a salary of say 120,000 or 12,000 cities every month. Set solid goals with figures and deadline on it. And tell yourself that, I don't know the level you are at, maybe level 2 or whatever it is. Whatever level you are at, set a deadline for yourself. That I want to become a chartered accountant by 2023 or 2022. Now, when you set that goal, and the goal challenges you, you will ma not make an excuse not to study, and you will definitely study. So, Nana... The way you get the appetite back is not any magic. It's go back to your cocoon and find out why you started in the first place and reset your goal very well. Set a bigger goal. Set much courageous goal and let it be big. Don't tell, sometimes you don't have to tell people about it because people will laugh at you and say it's not realistic. It's like you say, when I become chartered accountant, I will be making 12,000 cities every month and I will live in a better house. Sometimes when you make such statements, weak-minded people around you will, will be laughing at you and it may discourage you. So Nana, go back to your goals. Why did you start in the first place? And make a bigger goal for yourself. And now let that goal, let that feeling let that achievement that you have, let that dream that you have one day of becoming a chartered accountant and the impact that that will have on your life, let that emotion have with you or be with you now. Because you see, one way for you to become successful is to behave like you are successful. So if you want to one day become the CEO of your company, you have to now see yourself as the CEO of the company. It will change your attitude. It will change your way of life. Just for example, let's say you are working for a company. Let's say you are working for Ecobank or you are working for MTN. And you want to become the CEO of MTN one day. You want to become the CEO of uh, Ecobank one day. Don't put it in the future. See yourself today, right now, that I am the CEO of Ecobank. I am the CEO of uh, 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 um, MTN. Now, it's not daydreaming. It's not building castles in the sky. Because when you see yourself as a CEO, then you now ask yourself, what would a CEO do? If I'm a CEO right now, what would I do? If I'm a CEO of a company like MTN, I, I can't be going out with friends. I, don't, I will not have even friends in the first place. I will not have, there is a certain kind of people I will keep around me as my friends. There are certain kind of people that I will keep around me. I may not. Go, I will not go out. I will not just be on social media watching things that I'm not supposed to watch. I will not be frivolous watching Netflix every day because I am the CEO of a company. I've got to think about the company. So when you see yourself now as what you want to be, it changes your attitude. In the meantime, people will laugh at you. In the meantime, people will make mockery of you. In the meantime, people will call you name. We say a lot of bad things about you. Eh, I see a you're from crown picking, a day in quan, I see. Massa, a disyan crowd, the other is disyan by a crowd. What kind of dumb statements? So that is what I'll tell you, Nana. I love your genuity on this aspect. The only way you can bounce back your appetite for learning is to set a bigger goal for yourself on why you started this all of a sudden. Or why you started this in the beginning. And I can guarantee you, if you can set a bigger goal for yourself, you will be successful. And if you are the CEO of MTN right now, what will you do? It will change your mindset. It will change your way of life. It will change the way you dress. It will change the way you speak. It will change the way you, you react to people. And when you do that, 
it will help you to better allocate time for yourself and discipline yourself on what to do and what not to do there, there, there was a favorite statement about uh, uh somebody i forgot in the person but the person was uh, preaching and the person was like if you encounter a situation as a christian and you don't know what to do you have to ask yourself the situation that i've encountered if it was jesus christ encountering that situation what would he do look at the mindset so you encounter a situation a temptation or whatever it is as a christian then you ask yourself if this was jesus christ or if jesus christ was the one who encountered this what would he do immediately you start thinking that way you will get a revelation on what to do okay you, you have an opportunity to steal then you ask yourself if jesus christ had this opportunity would he take it then your spirit will tell you no then you will stop it is the same way on the build on the life you are building on the ica exams on the way you want to become successful so see yourself right now as the ceo of the company as the successful person that you want to become and if you see yourself like that it will change the way you do your things that is one of my secrets as an individual and that is why I do what I do. Okay? That is one of my secrets. And that is how, why I do the things I do. I see myself as a global brand. I see myself as somebody who, who is touching lives of individuals across the globe. And because of that, I have to sacrifice a lot. I need to put a lot of things on hold. I need to be reading. I need to be writing. I need to be researching. I need to be working on. Because I, 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 one, I don't, I'm not thinking about one day I will become. I see myself right now as that. So if I'm a global brand, what would I do? If I'm a global educator, I'm a global mentor, what would I do? So that future thing, I live it now. So that is how I see myself. That's how I carry myself. That is how I do my things. That is why we, have, we do this, uh, uh, this broadcast. Because it is something that is futuristic. But I say, hey, things may not be perfect now. My sound may not be too good. My background may not be too good. All right? My camera may not be too good. Yes. But I need to do it anyway. Because I see, that is how I see myself. And once you see yourself that way and you act every day and you do your things like that and you discipline yourself like that, you grow to become it. You grow to become it. So Nana, that is the thing that, that the advice I would give you as a brother. That's what I'll tell you. So I see a question. Nana said, thank you very much. In fact, you have made my day god richly bless you amen nana you also made my day with your honest uh statement and your honest question so god bless you too for that and i pray that uh um you will you will your spirit will be rekindled and you will really focus and work hard to become successful and achieve your goals at the end of the day because it takes some level of courage some level of grace some level of anointing to be able to actually do what it is you have to do in order for you to become successful so thank you very much nana for that question uh in that case right so i'm gonna be concluded around this uh place today on our discussion for the day uh i believe that you've you've learned a lot uh and you've picked a couple of things that you will implement in your life in order to take your life to the next level Remember, like I said, at the end of the day, you are responsible for everything that happens to you. So keep on working hard on yourself. Don't give yourself excuses. Don't give yourself excuses. Work hard on yourself. Work hard on everything that you are doing. And I know, keep on working hard and keep on praying. I know, when you work hard and you pray, we are all graced by God to help us. And he will help us. And he's helping us. So thank you very much for joining the stream today. Remember to um, stay blessed, stay safe, work hard. If there are any questions that you have, there are further inquiries that you want to make, 
you can uh, reach us by WhatsApp or call 050-114-9296. The number is in the uh, chat box there, uh, in the comment box or uh, in the intro of the V, in the post of the video, you will see the number there, 050-114-9296, 050-114-9296. You can reach us on WhatsApp or uh, that give us a direct call in that case. Remember also to subscribe to my YouTube channel because every single day I'm releasing new lecture videos and I sometimes also do live lectures there at 4 p.m. every day. And on Facebook, from Monday to Friday, we do uh, uh, the live stream like this and I'm going to be uh, coming your way all the time in relation to that. Tomorrow is Saturday. Uh, certainly, I will be coming your way here on Facebook, uh, but I'm yet to communicate or uh, to look at the time. It will not be like 6 p.m. Uh, uh, from the Monday to Friday, but probably somewhere around 3.30 p.m. or something like that. So we will post that in the on the page as well as on my YouTube channel, and you will get a notification on what exactly you need to do in order for you to become uh, successful and tomorrow i'll come your way again to share some strategies with you and also answer some questions that you have in relation to what you are studying thank you very much for taking time today to watch the video for those of you who like the video and who shared the video as well i really appreciate your support and i really appreciate uh, uh what you are doing and for those of you who also watched i thank you very much for taking time to watch and to listen to to listen to what i have to say uh today to you and I believe that all these things that we are doing is to assist you to prepare and pass your examination I want to see you pass I want to see you smile so keep working hard remember coronavirus is still there so wear your nose marks you sanitize your hands regularly you wash your hands regularly and keep social distancing very very important and stay blessed and stay safe remember Sunday to go to church for the Christians and tomorrow Saturday, remember also to go to church. Now, you know, we are not going to the physical church, but I know most of you, you run your services online. And so make sure you join your service online. Keep on praying, keep on believing in God, and may God bless you and stay blessed. Bye-bye.